exercise is a big one for me. I have not been consistent with meditation, but I have done some meditation, some yoga. I feel so much better every time I do that because it relaxes me. You know, my mind is yeah. quicker than everything else often. So I think you need to try and just have a, like a healthy lifestyle with food and exercise. I want to get to journaling. I, I still haven't started that. But I know that's a big one. That's a huge release. I'm trying to think what I do in my day to data. I mean, I, I exercise consistently, and consistency is is everything, especially like with people with ADHD. Welcome to Successful with ADHD. I'm Brooke Schnittman, and if you have ADHD and are feeling overwhelmed, chaotic, and negative self beliefs, you're in the right place. The Successful with ADHD podcast shares my guests' journeys of overcoming challenges, offering their tips and strategies for success to empower you to take control of your life and thrive with ADHD. Let's get started. Hi, everybody. This is Brooke Schnittman from Coaching with Brooke. I'm doing a new series where I interview successful people with ADHD. We want to show that people with ADHD, it's not all about the negativity. We can be successful. We want to highlight that. So today we have a special guest. His name is Elliot Simmet. He's an illusionist, celebrity illusionist. And today we're going to learn more about his story. We're going to learn how he overcame a lot of his ADHD symptoms and what are his secret tricks that make him successful. It's so nice to have you here, Elliot. So why don't you just introduce who you are? Yes. I'm from New York, born and raised, and I am an illusionist. So a little different, which is what we like having ADHD. We like different. Are we all? Absolutely. So tell me, like, what does an illusionist do? The impossible possible, pretty much. We create fantasy for people and we take people out of their worries and problems and misery just momentarily and bring them to a little bit of a euphoric experience. So tell me a little bit about your journey with ADHD and your diagnosis, your childhood. I, I have had it my entire life. I struggled through school, not only with ADHD, also learning disabilities, which I didn't know I had when I was younger. But homework was impossible for me. I barely made it through school by the skin of my teeth. It was extremely difficult. I remember taking Ritalin as a kid, a, a therapist suggested it for me. I took that for a little bit. I didn't like the side effects. So that was w many years ago. I figured I could just wing through life for this ADHD journey for the rest of my life. You know, until recently, just several months ago, I started doing research on YouTube on ADHD. And I'm like, I had no idea there was tens of thousands, millions of people with the same exact symptoms that I have with just the day-to-day -day struggles, really. Isn't that amazing that knowing, like, just the awareness? So you've had ADHD, you were diagnosed younger in life, not like everybody. You took Ritalin, you didn't like your side effects, so you're just winging it, but you didn't realize how much you didn't know you didn't know about ADHD until you... But it's amazing, like, like being aware of, of me having it has changed my entire life for the better. Because then you know how to navigate with this force, which again, as we all know, there's pros and cons to it. It's the greatest curse ever. Yeah. It helped a lot. Yeah. Obviously speaking to you and then you're like, hey, you keep, you break it down very simplistically, which I like and I need. Yeah. Elliot was essentially a keynote. I'm just going to call you a keynote at the Event Planner Expo in New York City. He did a huge performance alongside Mel Robbins, Jesse Itzler, Mario Armstrong, Jason Pfeiffer. And then she was looking for volunteers in the audience. And of course, I rode to my hands and he picked me. And he did some crazy tricks that everyone in the audience was like, oh my God, how did he do it? Did he have like a sign? Like, what did you see back there? You just blew away the audience. And obviously the instant connection that so many of us ADHDers have, we hit it off. We talked for a while. I asked you after the show, I saw him on a bad page and I said, hey, what do you do for work? You're like, I'm an ADHD life coach. And that was it. 
the rest is history pretty much. But I already felt like <laughs> incredible energy with you, yeah. great connection. And I was like, how does, what does that mean? I'm yeah. worth whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. I need you. Let's figure this out. Let's just figure it out. Exactly. Didn't know much about what we do specifically, but we were going to get on a call and figure it out together. Like everyone else, it's been a journey and a struggle and baby steps. I knew if I had the right coaching and someone I connected with, because with any kind of coach or therapist, you have to have a connection. Yeah. The possibilities were infinite if I had the right tools. Yeah. So let's talk more about you, though. So you are really successful and you did not share even the half of where you're at right now in your career, even before ADHD. So like ADHD coaching, we'll talk about that. That helped you navigate the day to day. But you've been in front of like huge yeah, so, celebrities. Uh, just going back to my story, I couldn't even finish high school. I got my GED. High school, it was just homework. Again, homework was impossible for me just school in general, but I knew from a young age, I wanted to do magic. So talk about people with ADHD. If we enjoy something, we have hyper-focus on it, right? So that was the only thing in the life I had hyper-focus on. I loved to learn magic. I'm a people person. I love to perform. So right out of high school, I toured with Ringling Brothers and part of a Bailey Circus for a year. That was more people auditioned. It was my dream as a kid. I love the circus. I went every year, the garden. Thousands of people auditioned. I was the only one to make it that year. They hired me on the Blue Unit to tour in the country. I, and then they asked me not only to be a clown in the show, but to host the pre show. So I was at a microphone welcoming people down to the arena floor before the show started, whoever bought a ticket. You were a clown. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. They only knew I wanted to do that for a year because I knew magic was my passion at that point in my life. Circus was a dream when I was a kid, but I knew magic. So I did that for a year. It was an unbelievable experience. First time on my own and forming ever since. I was a semifinalist on America's Got Talent the first season. So there was an American Idol for variety performers. I'd be perfect. So I auditioned and made it. I was a semifinalist on there. Did, done a lot of crazy tours and television shows and celebrity houses. And I performed in like P. Diddy's home in the Hampton. Like just all this craziness throughout the journey. You know, it's all it's all stepping stones, like everything else and part of the journey. You had mentioned something that was really important for the community. It's like you've made your hobby, your career, your life, because you were so hyper focused on illusion that you took that and you were able to make it more than just a hobby. But I had the drive and the passion for this art, for entertainment. Like that's the one thing I did have. So all the other ADHD setbacks and learning disabilities, I knew, like, I knew internally I can make it. You know, some people want to do things in life, but, like, they don't have the drive. They don't have that. Like, I knew I had, to, like, inside of me internally that I would give it that attention. So you were basically redefining the rules because when you and I grew up, everyone pretty much said, okay, be this, do that, you know, be a doctor, be a lawyer, be a teacher. And really, my mother was like, yeah, she was like, get a job with insurance. But I've always been the black sheep rebel, rebel did, went to the two to my own horn my whole life. So personally, yeah. like most people are parent pleasers. Thank God that was like, I never had that. So I was like, we have one life to live. I'm going to do whatever it takes to make myself happy. And I did that. Like I did that. Yeah. So you following your passion and you being unique and being that black sheep. So you call it, you got to level happiness, a level of success. And you've just built yourself up to level where someone who's just starting at your age wouldn't even know where to start. It takes years to get to be able to take a passion and make it a career. I mean, it took a long, yeah. a long time of just like getting by. And thank God, the more you do it, the better you get. Essentially, doors start opening up. So you did not take right in. I'm not saying because of that, but you were able to hyper focus on what you enjoyed, which was illusion and made it a career and with all of that what are some besides the hyper focus and the passion which is so important what else would you add to 
your success today as a father, as, you know, as an illusionist? What else would I add to it? You just have to want it and go after it and physically do things. And it's just, it's baby steps. It's little changes here and there to better yourself. Keep making the same mistakes on and over, but you got to realize after a while, like that is not helping. I'm learning every day as a father. It's funny, like the pages I used to follow on Instagram were one type. Now I'm like following a lot of mommy pages to learn how to do little things differently with my own. It's, it's, it's a journey. It's a mom journey. They should have a daddy. <laughs> I follow some daddy pages too, but I love, I love the mommy pages. Look, there's yeah. no magic wand that you wave and things just happen. You got to work for it. You make it look easy. <laughs> but tell me a little bit on how you felt like you overcame your trust. Just by paying attention to them and realizing this is not working and doing research on what I could do to better my life, essentially, better my career, better communication. That's a huge one. Not get so inside of my own head. You, you have to do the research or the work or hire somebody like certain aspects. I'm not lazy at all. And certain aspects, I know I'm not going to do that work at. Let me hire somebody. And I'm fortunate enough to be able to do that now to help me quicken this journey up. You want to be faster. You do the research and a lot of ADHDers are really good researchers. However, we struggle with analysis paralysis. So how did you make that executive decision to move forward and make the decision to hire a coach or, you know, commit to whatever it is that you commit to? Do you struggle with a that? A million percent. I probably more than most. Analysis paralysis, for sure. Okay. I overthink everything. I get stuck. I start. I don't say I, I have it all. Like whatever people or like, yeah, but you don't have this. I have it. Like, it's not even a question. I know I'm at the point in my life where it's it's just, it, it's affected me for so long. I'm like, something needs to change. Let me give it a shot. ADHD coach, I never even heard of it, but I know it's affecting me immensely. And maybe you could help me through this journey. Yeah, so you had that pain. You had the readiness level because you needed to overcome that challenge. That at a certain point in your life, you got to, Look, you're not always ready at different stages. Yeah. You just have to try it because you have yep. nothing to lose. Like, guess what? What am I going to lose? Money? If it doesn't work out, good. Money will come back. Great. I've lost money a lot. I've made a lot of money. And I've like, so what? What am I going to lose? Some time? Great. I've lost a lot of time. Like, right. nothing to lose. It could only benefit me. If I get one thing, I'm winning. That's all I'm at. Give me, Give me one tool. That That's my mentality. Yeah. Well, you definitely have a growth mindset. I like that piece, that aspect of you looking at uh, this journey as that, if I get one pool, if I make an improvement, I've gotten, you know, payback in my time and money. Because, you know, if you just keep trying the same thing over and over again, you know, it's a definition of insanity. So here you go. You're trying something new and, you know, it's moving you forward faster. That's awesome. How do you feel? Like, what is the real, like, key to you getting to where you are right now? Wanting my happiest, best life. There's no there, there there's no specific answer. I'm, I I understand your question. What's the key? It's baby steps is the key. People spend so much time, myself included, in our own heads. And let me tell you, that is exhaustion and a waste of energy. I'm a huge believer in R and D, like trial and error, research and development. Just try things because we know in life nothing good comes easy. We don't put the work and. Nothing. So like, I have to get the work into this ADHD because it's affected me for so long and I haven't put the work in because, you know, it's scary to put the work in. So I'm like, let me stop being a little punk and try something. And if it doesn't work, we now game. We try something else. So just trying in life, like just trying and not being afraid of the process. It's like, yeah, like you just like, do yeah. it or just trying. Just, just put yourself out there. And life's like, Things don't just happen. We know like Instagram's an illusion, right? Like nothing just happens. It's it's all hard work. I'm such a huge advocate of hard work. Absolutely. I know nothing else. I know in life, when I work hard, good things come. The universe opens doors for me. And when I don't work hard and I get inside my own head and I'm lazy and, and I'm just like analysis paralysis, guess what? The universe doesn't open any doors and I just stay paralyzed. Yeah. So you don't feel bad for yourself. You just keep moving forward. You keep trying and you keep putting, you know, your nose in front of you. At a certain point, you got to be like, that's not working. It's not working. Let's go. 
Like stop feeling bad for myself and just do something different. And not everyone had that's that mentality or that mindset. mindset. It's a complete mindset. I, I know a lot of people who are not as positive as I am, and I was born with it. It's DNA. And when people don't have a positive mindset, man, they really struggle. Like as bad as you and I have it, if you don't have a positive mindset, you really just get stuck. You can't move forward like that. So I think the attitude of the mind, self-love, that is huge. You, If you work on that and try and have that grow and master that, you could do anything. Absolutely. So tell me like, you obviously have an amazing mindset. You keep going, but you do other little things that help you with your mindset. Do you want to share that? I know you you work out pretty I mean, right. Exercise is a big one for me. I have not been consistent with meditation, but I have done some meditation, some yoga. I feel so much better every time I do that because it relaxes me. You know, my mind is yeah. quicker than everything else often. So. I think you need to try and just have a, like a healthy lifestyle with food and exercise. I want to get to journaling. I, I still haven't started that, but I know that's a big one. That's a huge release. I'm trying to think what I do in my day to data. I mean, I, I exercise consistently and consistency is, is everything, especially like with people with ADHD. Sure. So often we're in consistently inconsistent, but if you love something, like illusion or working out because working out makes you feel stronger or it makes you feel happy. So like you, you see that end result, you've had that passion for it, then yeah. you can be more consistent like you are. Like you have been sick. You had COVID recently, you got a bug that Jax had. And I know like you couldn't work out, but immediately it yeah. so got better. You no, got all or nothing better. type of, or, or most ADHD people. Yeah, sure, of course. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> I get tired of feeling like crap. Like I get it like it mentally exhausts me. So I get in my head, this is going to be so tough to get back into. I haven't worked out now in three weeks. You know, after you don't work out in four days, you get back into it, no problem. Three, four weeks, you're starting from scratch again. I don't overthink. I struggle for a few days and I just try to get in a rhythm. If you get in a rhythm with anything in life, you're good. It's getting in that consistency. Thank God I don't have any kind of clinical depression. But I know like workout exercise helps people with depression, anxiety. It's a low dose SF to ride. When you're yeah. sweating and you're burning out all that stress and you can't overthink when you're working out, it's too tough. Absolutely. Yeah. So Elliot, if people want to find you, see you perform, see what you've done. My initials, Elliot Zim at easymagic.net. Definitely my Instagram. I perform all over the place. I do shows of all kinds too from Everything from sleight of hand magic to big, crazy illusion stuff with humans and animals. And I get inside people's heads. It's it's crazy. I've never seen illusion like yours. I'm talking to the community here. You have to see more of what Elliot does. It's insane. No, there's nothing for me anyway. There's nothing like experiencing magic live. I feel like it's an in-person art. You have to feel the energy. It's much easier. I mean, I can do it here too. But like to get inside people's heads in person, there's nothing like that connection. And for me, being in the moment is everything. Everything. Okay. So once again, tell everyone who you are, where they can find you. At Elliot Zimit. I post yeah. a bunch of magic stuff. I'm going to continue to post some magic stuff. I am Elliot Zimit. I am an illusionist and magician, mentalist. I do it all. I combine it all. And the reason why I call myself an illusionist, I heard David Copperfield once say illusionists get paid 20% more. So I'll call myself an illusion. Uh, yeah, I'm a father of a beautiful six-year-old boy named Jax. He's the love of my life. And he's helped me grow as a performer and a human with communication and being present and all of life. It all goes hand in hand. Yeah, he definitely added another huge element to your life and purpose. I just see how you are with him. Yeah, I know. What, what a privilege it is to be a parent and... That's what it is. It's just, it's a privilege, it's a blessing. And not take that for granted yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. Right. Any last closing thought? <laughs> we just, I, I mean, for me, the most important thing, honestly, was you you just were such a kind-hearted, genuine person. And we had a connection. So that, for me, was everything. So once, like, I felt the connection, Thank Brooke you. has a whole company. She was like, I have all these coaches. I was like, no, no, no. I want you to be my coach because I have a connection with you. 
And once I have a connection with somebody, that's it for me. Like that's that's everything. Isn't that the truth for ADHD or that relationships are really our love language? I mean, that communication, going straight to the owner, going straight to the person, it's so hard to connect with a company unless you have that. With, without a doubt. People ask me like how I have so many connections in my career. And like, I, I love people and I like to get to know people on a personal basis. I don't know. It's either have or you don't with somebody, you know? Totally. I just felt an immediate connection with you, even on stage. Like, it's just the vibe. It's, it's there. It's not. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of Successful with ADHD. I hope it helped you on your journey. And if you need any additional support for you or a loved one with ADHD, feel free to reach out to us at coachingwithbrooke.com and all social media platforms at Coaching with Brooke. And remember, it's Brooke with an E. Thanks again for listening. See you next time.